If Russia stops this war, there will be no war. But if Ukraine stops this war, there will be no Ukraine. Just the perfect quote by the US Secretary of the State, Antony Blinken. And today is the day when these so-called referendums in Luhansk, Donetsk, Zaporozhye and Kherson are starting to happen. In addition to that, we will talk about whether Russia is actually planning to recruit 1.2 million people instead of 300,000. And finally, the counteroffensive of Ukraine in the East finally started to pick up. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up, investors? It's the Russian dude. And let's go straight to the point and talk about these uh, referendums in four different Ukrainian regions. And soon enough, Russian propagandists started showing us videos like this, where we can see, for example, a man voting in the lobby of his house, with most likely a couple Russian soldiers pointing guns at him <laughs> behind the camera. And then we have videos like this, where local volunteers are walking around the neighborhoods and speaking through the loudspeaker saying come vote, everyone should vote. And uh, not surprisingly enough, the streets are empty. But what Russian propaganda really doesn't want you to see is videos like this. And as you can see, the local authorities being accompanied by Russian soldiers do door-to-door -door knocking. And well, to be honest, I really doubt that they are selling uh, vacuum cleaners. Alright, and before I talk about whether Russia is actually planning to recruit 1.2 million people, allow me to quickly show you some videos from the south. And while I'm going there, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel if you like this style of daily updating. Alright, so the first video came to us from Odessa, and right here you can see an Iranian drone Shahid-136. This is a kamikaze drone, and its target was a port infrastructure in Odessa. Then we have this video, allegedly somewhere from the Black Sea, where Ukrainians were able to capture another Iranian Iranian drone Mohajit 6. And finally, as you can see from this video which came to us from Dnipro, Ukrainian air defense system was able to intercept another Russian drone. And by the way, if you want to see more combat footage from today's episode, especially the one which I was not able to use, please consider checking my Patreon. All the proceeds will be donated to Ukraine and you can find all the useful links down below. Alright, and now let's talk about the second major part of the video. According to this article, Russia is planning to recruit approximately 1.2 million people into its army. And in my honest opinion, it is technically not 100% true. And here is why. So, you already know about the partial mobilization of 300,000 people. And most likely, Russia will need all these extra soldiers to protect itself from what's coming after these referendums. But during the initial presidential order about this partial mobilization, it was missing paragraph 7, which created so many speculations what was this all about. And one of the most popular ones is that Russia might recruit more than 1 million people if they need it. But I personally think that the reason why paragraph 7 was missing it is because they simply missed it. But then one of the first excuses by the Russian government is that paragraph 7 was supposed to be only for internal use. Which to be honest does not make sense because this order of a mobilization is a public information. And so that is why I personally assume that Russia will only officially recruit 300,000 people. But I mean, as long as you trust the Russian government. Because yes, for sure, unofficially it can be way more than that. But the main question remains the same. If Russia is already experiencing so many problems with just equipping the existing army, where would they find more clothes and weapons? I mean, yes, you can create it, but how long will it take to weaponize 300,000 people? Alright, and before I talk about the accelerating counteroffensive of Ukraine in the East, here are just a couple more ridiculous facts about this partial mobilization. First of all, according to the military representative Evgeny Fuzhenko, Russia might also recruit category B soldiers. And these are the people who are eligible for the military service with some limitations. Second is that Russian touristic agency said that Russian men have no problem leaving the country. And here is the funny part. If these men are unsure whether they can actually do it, they should contact their nearest military enlistment office for clarification. So it's like, imagine this. A guy walks into the military enlistment office and asks, hey, do you think I can go abroad? 
And then the officer replies, yeah, sure, how does Ukraine sound? And then we have this statement by the advisor to the head of Crimea, Oleg Krychkov. And he's saying that, yeah, no problem, men can leave the peninsula without restrictions. But those men eligible for the military service must register within their local military enlistment offices. And then, if you remember, if you are registered in some way or another within the Russian army, you cannot leave the borders of your region. And finally, we have the statement by Ramzan Kadyrov. And he is speaking to those Russian men who avoid going to the army. And he says that you don don, don you are just a cover don. You don't want to serve Russia don. But whenever you need something don from Russia don, then you are the perfect citizen don don. And at the same time, reportedly, not a single Kadyrov man relative is now serving in the army. And to make things even funnier, Ramzan Kadyrov also mentioned that Chechnya will not participate in this partial mobilization. Because according to him, Chechnya already gave three times the required soldiers to Russia. Alright, and now let's talk about the real news, the upcoming Kharkov 2.0 counteroffensive of Ukraine in the East. First of all, according to this article, Article, Ukrainian forces were able to liberate the village of Yetskivka. And what makes this particular liberation to be so important is that, as you can see, it is located on another side of the river. And if you remember, one of the major factors of successful counteroffensive in the east will be to cross the water obstacles. Liberating Yetskivka also allows me to assume that the next direction for the Ukrainian army will be to encircle Liman, which is, if you remember from my previous episodes, is the major city before Ukraine can liberate Severodonetsk and Lysychansk. Besides that, according to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, individual Ukrainian groups are advancing in the direction of Liman from Ritko Dub. And if you take into consideration the traditional attack on Liman from the south, it basically means that the city will be encircled. This is also confirmed by the Russian infiltrator in Donetsk, Denis Pushilin, and he basically says that there is a large group of Ukrainians to the north of Donetsk region. And then, according to Alexei Arestovich, he thinks that Liman will be liberated within two days. I now want to personally say thank you to Cindy Mitchell, Elliot Gasgoin, York Van Del Schaaf and Mike Roland for becoming my most recent channel members. I know I failed, even though I did my best, but if you also want to see me trying to pronounce your name, please consider becoming my channel member as well. Also, don't forget about our charitable live stream this Saturday, September 24th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you're bad with time zones just like I am, please follow me on Instagram, because this is where I'll put the countdown. And finally, big changes are happening within the Russian Dude community, and if you want to know what's going on, feel free to join my Discord. Yes, it's completely free. Thank you so much for your attention, stay safe, and see you tomorrow during charitable live stream.